Oh, have I? <laughs> well, I think so. I think most people reckon. I think most people know you. So, well, that's great. I mean, I like that. how did you? How did you get into dancing? Because I mean, well, I think you. Um, I used to wiggle around the floor when they played music when I was about three months old, <laughs> and apparently when I was three years old, I found a little platform in the Methodist Hall or whatever hall we were having the reception for my auntie's wedding, and apparently I crawled on it and did ten minutes stand up. <laughs> and made them all laugh so much they said oh he's a natural performer you've got to put him to dance classes so that's how I started yeah and, uh, and it went from there I mean you you, you were uh, yeah. you were the shortest ever male dancer yeah well the thing is I won I used to tap dance with my feet turned out mm-hmm. like Charlie Chaplin mm-hmm. which is totally wrong for tap but it's perfect for ballet so when I went in for the competition at the age of eight I won the cups and everything for the under 12. She said, he's a budding Danny Kay, all this sort of thing. We were thrilled. <laughs> you know, my mummy loved it. I used to polish my medals every day. <laughs> it's pathetic, really, but it's what every child de- dreams of. Mm. You know, if you want to be a performer, you want to be the best. Mm. And uh, she said, this boy must learn ballet. Um, and where's his mother? He must learn ballet. My mother crawled out of the hall thinking, I don't mind him doing a bit of Fred Astaire, but I don't want, I don't want him doing any ballet in tights. And, uh, but then I won a scholarship to the Royal Ballet School out of 300 other children because we were working class, we had no money. Mm-hmm. And I won a scholarship to the Royal Ballet School in London and in Regent's Park. So I went from the West Hartlepool Tech in County Durham <laughs> to Queen Victoria's Hunting Lodge in Richmond Park and lived there for five years. And then I didn't grow and I wasn't going to get into the Royal Ballet, but I was told by the um, inventor of the Royal Ballet, Dame Lynette de Volvo, who we called Madam, and she was um, a bit fearsome, you know, but <laughs> she loved me. And she said, you're just going to have to jump as, twice as high as everybody else and spin twice as fast. <laughs> so I couldn't let her down, so I did, and that's what got me in the company, doing virtuoso roles. Yes. You know, I could do things the others couldn't do, so yeah. that was great, you know, well, and that's why I got in. I remember this, actually. 1973, you established a world record. Oh, yes. Uh, 12 beats... Uh, which is uh, it, it's called an entre, entre deux. Deux. yeah, which is it, twelve, unbelievable, and that yeah, was well, on record standing, breakers. Well, it's from a standing position, and each leg crosses, mm. so that counts as one. But it's actually six crossings of the legs in midair before landing Blimey. from and a ha- standing position. And how many of those did you do? Well, six, and the Jinsky kid only done five, apparently. Really? So it was on a live show, the record breakers. I remember it with Roy Castle, the lovely, the lovely Roy Castle. Royal Castle was wonderful, oh. wasn't it? He was a lovely man. Uh, sadly missed. Sadly missed, sadly I think. Sadly missed. Yeah. Anyway, he said there and then, it was live TV. Yeah. And he said, do you think you can beat the record? And I thought, well, I can't shy away as a ballet guy because I'll think, oh, he's too scared to have a go. <laughs> and so I was on the spot. And so I stood there and I did it for some miraculous reason. I'd never done it before. I think the nerves made me jump a bit higher. Bit of, bit of, <laughs> bit of the old adrenaline kicked in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's now it's um, it's been there for quite a while. Yeah, nineteen seventy three. So yeah. it's quite a few. Well, blimey, it's a good few years. But you've yeah. worked. I mean, you've worked. But I had to be able to do those kind of things, mm. you know. But I was I was an actor as well, so I could play character parts. Mm. And uh, so with that and the technique, that's what got me into the Royal Ballet Company mm. because I was far too small to part of the girls. But that meant I had some wonderful choreographers, people making up dances especially for me mm. and ballets and uh, because I could do things they'd never seen before mm. you know so it was great for me to do that yeah I mean you've had an illustrious West End career with the uh, song and dance and of course and cats. I, the role yeah that was the role I was going to ask you about oh, the right, Mr. Yeah. Mistopheles you were you in there with Mr. Blessed yes I was with Brian Blessed uh, Paul Nicholas I, Bonnie Langford and Elaine Page not a bath. Uh, not a bad cast, eh? Not, not, not too bad. Not, not, you know, no, no shabby actors in there. No. no. I bet, I bet you've got some great stories to tell us about Brian. Oh, he's, oh yeah. He's, he's a great... outrageous. I've had, the, I've had the big, the pleasure of spending time in his company, and, um... Uh, yes. <laughs> we had to edit like half the... It is. <laughs> we had to edit half the interview, I'm afraid. Oh, I know, it was, um... yes, every other word, <laughs> But what a, what a great guy! What what a, what a gentleman! Uh, an absolute yeah. gentleman. So yeah. um, 
Oh, you, you moved on to there, and you've, you've done lots of other things. I think everybody remembers for you dancing with Princess Diana in 1985, was it? Yes, that's right. Yeah. And that, that must have been well, exciting and frightening. Me, well, she phoned my secretary and said, I'd like Wayne to teach me dance classes to keep fit, because she loved the dance, obviously. And uh, I said, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm on tour. So I got my dance captain, the person who looks after my show, sits out front and tells me when I'm wrong and when mm. I'm right. We all need one of those, you know. <laughs> I've got a wife. We need somebody <laughs> correcting us. And uh, she then phoned me and said, I want you to do a number with you at Covent Garden for the Christmas Friends Christmas party. And like three, we get 2,500 2, people there and we all do a cabaret. And she said, I want to do it at that performance to surprise my husband, Prince Charles. And uh, so halfway through the show, she gets out of the raw box and comes on stage with me and we'd rehearsed it obviously and we mm -hmm. kept it from the media and the press and uh, we rehearsed at the Buckingham we had Kensington Palace then we'd rehearse at my studio then we go somewhere else a lot of it was done on the phone and over six months she perfected it and we did it to Billy Joel's Uptown oh, Girl yeah. she's been living you know that lovely song and so when she wrote to me afterwards saying now I understand the buzz you get out of performing it yeah. brought the house down you can imagine yeah, that must have been. We didn't expect it, it at all. That must have been hugely exciting and hugely terrifying at the same time. Yes, it was more terrifying for me. She <laughs> talked to it like a duck to water. She'd be doing it all her life. Well, uh, I I was scared to drop the then, <laughs> which would have been the future Queen of England. So <laughs> no. I couldn't. Uh, I was I was panicking more than she was basically mm. underneath. I mean, you've done quite a bit of reality TV. You did I'm a Celebrity. Yes. Uh, what was that? That must have been. Strange. Well, I'm a celebrity taught me a lot of discipline. It's something you would never ever do in your lifetime on your own, would you? No, not Go at all. A remote not, place not a chance. In the jungle and start eating bugs and things. Oh. And uh, I, had, I was put in a cage with rats and I had to get the food out. But I only got two meals. I think uh, that's another world record, by the way. <laughs> oh, is it? For the wrong reason. <laughs> At least meals. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> you did... people. And then yes. you famously did MasterChef. Was it last year or the year before? Oh, yeah, I did uh, Celebrity Master and got to the finals last year. That's right, it was last year, yeah. Yeah. That, that was... That, that's great fun. I enjoy that sort of... I'm, I must admit, I enjoy... Oh, that, I think that's the most frightening thing I've ever done. Yeah. Because you have to get um, a main course and a dessert in, in within an hour. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'd never done cooking before, so yeah. everything to me was always new. And I couldn't believe it when, when this thing suddenly... I opened the oven and there it was, <laughs> in perfect form. And I thought, there is a God. Yeah, <laughs> that it's... wasn't me that did it. Every... And I kept staying on and on and on. Mm. And it, I just couldn't believe my luck. And anyway, it's given me a hobby now. I was going to say, it's cooking inspired. right now to the end of my life. Yeah, it's, um, I, I come from a, a lot of people don't know, so I come from a professional cooking background. Oh, do and, you? and people... I worked at the Cafe Royal for a little while. I also worked at uh, Champney's Health Club for a little while. Oh, yeah. And... Um, People see cooking, and they, I think it's made big by the Bake Off and a few other shows, and yeah. people think it's easy. Oh, no. Uh, it's easy maybe to cook for you and your husband or you and your sister or whatever. That's well, fine. Judy Kidd and I partnered up, and we had to feed 150 yeah. people. Yeah, uh, do, do it for... I mean, I used to cook for two, three hundred... Yeah. Uh, 2,000 people, and sometimes in three different rooms, three different menus. Oh, no, it's dreadful. And people, you know, anybody who thinks that's easy... I always say to them, come have a go. Yes, exactly. You know, well, it, 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 I had to go to a restaurant and I had to do um, the liver with onions oh. and sweet potatoes mm. and the bacon. And this table ordered one medium and one medium rare. And of course, I have to serve them at the same time. Mm. And I thought, you, whoever invented the word medium rare should be shot. <laughs> I have everything medium rare, but I had to yeah. do the two. So I had to cook one for one minute, and then the other one for two, <laughs> and remember which plates they're oh, on. You know, I, you know it's, and you come out absolutely shaking. Yeah. And the, my favourite words that year were, kitchen's closed. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose now, when you go out for a meal, you appreciate yeah. the food and the yes, skills. Yes, I do, but then I become worse, because if it's not right, I send it back. I, I, I must admit, I'm a little bit like that. Yeah, um, I'm not, I, mean, I don't take prisoners where that comes No. It's, um, so have you got any more plans to do any more of the reality shows? Well, I, I've just done one. Well, it's not a reality show, but I've just been to India for three weeks. Wow. And um, we've got um, a, um, a documentary based on the Marigold Hotel syndrome. Oh, yeah. 
That's uh, where we, eight of us went over who are sort of celebrities, and we all um, had to go and with our own agenda to see if we could actually retire in India. Because your money goes a lot further. Mm. I mean, it's only a, you can make £200 last a month there. Really? You know, and it's incredible. So it's incredibly cheap. But could you stick the heat? No. Could you stick the bikes in the roads and the mm. cows? Mm. Take your cows everywhere and pigs going through rubbish. But the people are so wonderful. I could mm. actually live there for six months easier, touring yeah. around the India, having a base, and then coming back here. Yeah, I recently watched the Marigold Hotel. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, it's when, when's this show? When, when's this show due to air? Do you know? Do you know? And January, February on BBC Two. Okay, well, we all keep an eye out for that. And you yes. recently, you've recently done the Chase as well, haven't you? Um, yes, I did, and we won. Did you? Yes, we did. did. I couldn't believe it. Who were you? Who? Some of the questions they asked me. You're so nervous. You say the most stupid thing because <laughs> I knew the answers. So I still got through. Who? Who? Who were, who were you up against? Oh, the big guy. The know, beast, the Mark LeBac. Mark, Mark. Yes. Oh, he's frightening. He, he's he's a big and he fella. Was very annoying when he didn't win. He was very annoying. Oh, I know. But everybody, as you said earlier on, everybody likes to be the best, and everybody likes to win. And I think they, they pretend they don't mind, but they do. Oh, and also, I did um, Celebrity Family Fortunes, and we won that as well. Oh, well, you're on a winning streak at the moment. Well, uh, it's very nice, isn't it? And you're coming to Milton Keynes, so you're on to a winner to, there. You're on to a winner there. In Aladdin, I'm playing Genie of the Ring. Yeah. And we've got Priscilla Presley. I know. Tale got... of the Ring. I say with the lamp. I know. Or, or Genie of the Lamp, yeah. That's going to be fun. she's a legend, you know. Yeah, I know. I'm looking forward to meeting her, actually. I'm coming along for opening night, I believe it is. Oh, great. And I'm looking forward to meeting her. I'm oh, a good. big yeah. fan of her hus- ex-husband, you know, uh, late oh, husband. Of course. Oh, huge fan. Yeah, so, um, that's great. And apparently yeah. she's very nice. And she's very good at her job. Oh, well, that's good. Well, I was going to say, uh, one of the questions I was going to ask you, is anybody in the cast you're looking forward to working with? Yes, yeah, Gary Wilmot. Uh, I saw Gary a few months ago in, um, oh, what's the Dirty Rotten Scoundrels? Oh, yeah, he never stops working. He's... He's brilliant in that. He's like a whirling dervish. Oh, he's brilliant in everything. He's a... I played opposite him in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang oh. when I played the child catcher. Yeah. And he played, you know, cracked first pots or whatever yeah. it is. Well, you know, in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang at the Palladium. Mm-hmm. And he's always been such a professional. Then I appeared with him on one of the Royal Variety shows, which mm-hmm. made his name. Yeah. And um, I've seen him off and on a lot. But what I... He's, he's the real McCoy. He knows he's, his job. Oh and that's what I love about First Family Entertainment. They, mm. they pick people who are known for what they do. I've got a big dance number in it. A big tap number, actually. Oh, good. It's going in near the end, I think. And it's... Um, you know, they, they bring people who've got the skills. Mm-hmm. You know? Not just people who are well known for yeah, the sake I, of it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I, I've seen pantos, and it's obvious that they've got this star and they've yeah. built the panto round them, and it, and it does yeah. not work. I, I get to see a lot of panto. Um, yeah. What, what, I mean, really, what, what does panto mean to you? I mean, it means lots of things to different people. Well, doesn't it? panto for me, first of all, it's to do with the family. It's mm-hmm. when everybody can go to a show together and see their little ones, the future, their grandchildren or their babies or their children, all have a good laugh and take part. They all understand the story. We make it very easy for them to follow. They see spectacle. They see color. Mm. And there's romance in it. And and some of them, of course, participate because they get up on stage at the end and, Mm. you know, get interviewed. And it may be what gives them a feeling to maybe one day go on the stage themselves. Yeah, I mean, I, I was very fortunate. My gra- my late grandmother took me to, I mean, London Palladium and oh, yeah. the Golders Green Empire when I was six. I'm middle 50s now, so yeah. it's a long while ago. And I ha- I saw people like, I think it was Freddie Garrity, if I remember correctly, it's yeah. a long, long while ago, in Panto, and I loved it. And yeah. it's my, well, I my, did my first time to at the London Palladium in 1973 or something. Well, I think this might have even been pre pre that, actually. It would have been late it 60s, I think, when I went. Yeah. And the uh, but, tradition and, and, it's and the jokes get handed down, mm. and it's you know only done in England, and no, yeah, Canada, I know. and Australia. Nobody yeah, else, I have anywhere a friend, else in the world. Yeah, I've got a friend who's American. Try and explain it to him. It's like you know, <laughs> you know it's like explaining <laughs> cricket to him. No, I don't. I mean. You, I mean, I said, what, what would this panto mean to me? Would, would you not, on, on, over Christmas, would you not rather be at home with your feet up? No. No, I'm, I'm good. I'm, no, I get so bored. Do you? You know, and I'd probably be in another show anyway. <laughs> but, um, 
No, I mean, yes, I mean, for us it's not a holiday. No. You can go away after Christmas. It's, it's... And, but, you know, it's lovely.